So we are so glad you are here with us today. Let's start things off by introducing Katie Tammany. Katie is Chief Marketing Officer at Monrovia, and she is also our Chief Storyteller and Trend Spotter, bringing us insights into wonderful ways we can enjoy our outdoor spaces. Katie has more than 25 years of expertise in lifestyle and leisure industries, and she is the former editor of Sunset Magazine. She's also a longtime avid gardener with specific interests in the connections between garden, art, health, and well-being. Hi, Katie. Hi, good morning, everyone. Next, I'd like you to meet Megan McConnell. Megan is Monrovia's Plant Information Director. In addition to managing Monrovia's plant database of nearly 4,000 different varieties, Megan is responsible for all of the plant information that appears on monrovia.com and on the tags that you see on the plants in the garden center. So if you've asked a question in a past webinar, chances are you've already had a conversation with Megan. She has supplied many of your answers. She is our go-to expert for choosing the right plant for the right application. Hi, Megan. Hi, good morning. With that, I'm gonna hand it off to Katie to start things off. Great. Well, thank you. Um, well, hopefully gardening, you know, you don't encounter a lot of problems in gardening, right? It's such an enjoyable um, activity, brings us so much beauty in our lives, but occasionally um, we can all be stumped <laughs> by the challenges um, that uh, nature might throw our way. Um, so to start off, as Kathleen said, we'd like to do a little poll, um, find out maybe what you're most concerned about um, this summer. So are you concerned about fending off deer and dealing with maybe other critters uh, in the garden, deer, rabbit, you know, eating, eating your good work? Or maybe it's wilted or sunburned plants, you know, as the heat index uh, rises. Um, you know, we all get concerned about that in summer. Or possibly it's soil challenges, which aren't really just a summer concern, but maybe all the time. Um, clay soil, sandy soils, what, what has you um, feeling most challenged in your garden? So it looks like the poll has launched, um, they're off, it's like a race uh, to see, um, you know, which it looks like, you know, pretty evenly um, split between all these challenges uh, too, which is not surprising depending on where you live in the country too. Some things might be more of a concern than others. Um, this so might be the closest poll we've ever had. I think so. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, so we've got evenly split, you know, sort of 30, 35% wilted or sunburned plants, 33% soil, and 32% fending off uh, deer. I would say um, that uh, the deer challenge is one of the, uh, you know, trickiest ones because, you um, you know, just when you think you've solved that, <laughs> deer decide, you know, they're, they're wanting to, uh, to eat something that you thought, you know, they didn't like. So let's jump in. Actually, we're going to be covering today. Oops. Um, uh, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. We're going to be covering, as we said, problem solving plants. And that would include uh, your biggest challenges that we've, we've heard about. We've taken what we, the questions that we get the most um, emailed to us and we've sorted out um, some great plants Megan has to answer some of those uh, problems. We're going to talk about some low maintenance container ideas for your busy summer. Um, and then Megan and I have gotten together and we've chosen what we think are superstar plants for all kinds of problems, needs. These are This is our go-to list. So um, stick around <clears throat> for the whole webinar to get all of that. So jumping in, um, I, I think, you know, we decided to start with heat loving plants that can really take the heat. Somehow I knew that would be one of the greatest uh, problems out there. Um, and I think something to keep in mind is that there are so many choices in terms of garden style for gardens that can really beat the heat. Of course, I'm in California and I think immediately about succulents, but in other parts of the country where it's very humid, um, there are some excellent standouts that really give the garden that tropical lush look that we all you know, love and makes us feel like we're on vacation. Um, so Megan, to start off with, uh, tell us about the heat lovers that you've selected. 
Yeah, so first of all, sorry for assaulting you with color on this first slide. <laughs> I swear I calmed down after this. Um, I think, you know, we all know sort of the obvious, like, you know, cactus, things like that. So I wanted to give you guys maybe some different things that you might not realize uh, were really great with the heat. So starting with Coreopsis, I love Coreopsis as a summer bloomer. I love those warm colors, oranges, red, yellow in my summer garden. Um, Coreopsis is just a powerhouse. It keeps blooming all through the heat. It loves it. I love it at the front of borders because it just gets covered in flowers all over top to bottom. Um, and this one is a thread leaf, so it has that great fine texture, um, just this lovely airy plant. Uh, meadow sages, salvias, this is the blue buchetta. Uh, it's a shorter option, so again, great for front of your border. Um, loves the heat, keeps blooming. Uh, the flowers are sterile, so that means there's even more blooms because that's what it's putting its energy into. Um, also a deer tolerant option. Um, and I mean, look at that flowering and the, just that. It's so intense. Yeah, it's really <laughs> bright. I love it. I love Pretty it. amazing. That's great. You know, it's small and all those blooms is great for containers to big impact in a little space. Our Grace and Grit roses, um, we tested these from coast to coast. You know, we tried them in the humidity of the southeast. We tried them in the dry of the southwest, and they just do great everywhere. So these have been an awesome plant. Um, they're self-cleaning um, and just a wonderful way to keep bringing in color all summer long into your garden. Um, I love sort of the creamy of the yellow, but we have this in five different colors to check out. Mm -hmm. I have this one in my garden actually. And I love that as it, um, as the bloom stays on the, the shrub for a while, it, it turns to this sort of creamy white, sort of romantic white look, um, but it starts really intense and yellow. So I, I just love that progression. And it really does stand up to the, to the heat beautifully. I, yeah, I love roses for that. Um, uh, moving on to the summer lasting raspberry crepe myrtle. Uh, crepe myrtles love the heat. In fact, they need the heat to bloom. So the warmer your area, the sooner they're going to bloom. Um, here where it's a little cooler in Oregon, they're very late season bloomers. So it's an awesome time to bring in that super vibrant color the summer lasting series is a smaller one so these are little shrubby versions three to four feet tall and wide uh, this one has that awesome dark foliage um, and it blooms a lot earlier than other dark foliage varieties um, which is awesome and then it reblooms so you're going to keep getting those blooms and it reblooms without any dead heading so mm -hmm. just a really easy, awesome plant, dry heat, humidity, it loves both. Uh, Tropicana canna, a great one for humidity, um, awesome foliage, amazing blooms, a really fast grower. Uh, this is really great near a pool. It can take that reflected heat, that humidity. It looks awesome in containers and gives you just that nice tropical feel around your pool. Um, and if this isn't hardy in your area, you can overwinter it indoors by digging it up. Um, so you can uh, overwinter these rhizomes. Hmm. And then bougainvilleas, love the heat. Again, humidity or dry, um, just amazing, vibrant colors on these. You'll see these trained up on arbors or trellises. Um, they look so good, like trained over a doorway on a stucco house, just this iconic look. Um, this is the Burgundy Queen. So the new foliage is this great dark burgundy color. Um, and then it's got these dark flowers, just really sort of romantic. Uh, and if you, again, if this isn't hardy in your area, this is great in plants. You can find it uh, in containers. You can find this as an annual in a lot of garden centers. Um, and it'll kind of cascade over the edges. And again, just continuous summer color. It just keeps going. And I love this bougainvillea and the crepe myrtle for their really dark foliage. I think that that's, that's nice and kind of, I don't know, cooling in the heat, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love that. 
so kind of related, I guess, to this problem is, um, but, but not so, you know, intense with the sun, dry shade. So, you know, it's hot, but maybe you've got a section of your garden that's, you know, underneath trees or, you know, it is, it is shady. Um, but you can't use a lot of water in the summer, you know, maybe your garden's not getting it naturally, or you're, you're trying to cut back on your water use. Um, so what are some good choices uh, for the dry shade situation? We get a lot of questions about this because people, I think, are, you know, um, just thinking they have a lot of limited choices, but we really have so many. And I, I, I have to admit, I'm not familiar with the bishop's hat that you chose here, Megan, but I just, I think it's so unique and darling and kind of magical. Yeah, I love bishop's hat. Again, you know, like you said, I think a lot of people don't know about this one, but it is a great dry shade plant. It can take more sun, but it can take full, full shade. Um, and it's a great one. A lot of times the reason you have dry shade is tree roots. The trees are taking a lot of the water. This is a great one that can live among tree roots. Hmm. Um, and it forms just a nice kind of ground cover. It's great for massing. And the new foliage on this one is that great, you know, sort of dark burgundy that you see, but then it lightens and it's, you know, a lighter green with some reds and then it turns into a dark green. Hmm. And then you get these spring flowers that are just these lovely little sprays of these really unique little pink flowers that are so cool. Um, so yeah, really a underused, just a great performer in your dry shade garden. And it stays pretty, pretty um, compact. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It's, you know, you do need to mass it if you want it to be a ground mm -hmm. cover. It's a very uh -huh. slow okay. um, sort of spreader, but it gets on its own, just one plant about, it's only about a foot tall and that one will get like three feet wide. Okay. Um, so spacing wise, I always say it depends on how patient or impatient. You are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can plant them a lot closer if you want it to be, um, fill in really quickly. Got it. Um, so ivory prints heliobore. Of the heliobores, this particular variety is the most tolerant of dry conditions. Mm -hmm. um, you can see it gets the, just loaded with these awesome blooms that are sort of green and, and white with blushes of pink. And then uh, it's an evergreen, actually, and the leaves are just really sturdy. They're sort of a like a silvery gray green. Mm -hmm. Um, that are really lovely. So yeah, it can actually, it can take a fair amount of, of dry conditions. It can take a, you know, a little more sun as well. Um, so of, of the heliobores, if you're looking for that, I definitely recommend this if your shade is a little drier. Uh, the Osley Ladies Mantle, I wouldn't call this a dry shade in like your Southwest regions, but you know, it's a zone three to eight. So areas that aren't uh, quite that extreme, it's going to do really well in your dry shade. Uh, again, a nice one to mass to sort of cover in a large area. And the flowers are this, you know, lovely green that look amazing in flower arrangements. So I really love it for that. And they dry really well. I had good success drying these. And they make, they, yeah, they make great sort of flowers and bouquets, which is really nice. Yeah, just at that nice green, it goes with everything and that fine texture, it's a great addition. For warmer areas, uh, you know, it's right in the name, the cast iron plan is really <laughs> bulletproof. It can take full shade, it doesn't need a lot of water. This is the spectacular. So it has, you know, the great sort of sword shaped leaves and then, this one's a little more interesting. You get the little speckles um, of the lighter color in there. Um, so a fun addition to that one. And it, this actually makes a really great easy care house plant that doesn't need a lot mm. of water. So it's nice, really versatile indoors and out. Mm -hmm. right. You could have it outdoors, move it in, or just keep it indoors all the time. Um, super unique. We love this one, the Jurassic Brontosaurus tongue fern. Uh, this was a Dan Hinckley find. Um, so in nature, this grows, you know, on trees or on rocks. So this is a great one. It likes that good drainage. If you have a slope, um, sort of a woodland area, this is a great one to try, you know, tucking in the rocks and the, the tree roots. 
Um, so it's a great option. Sometimes when you have shade, you've got that really, um, you know, sloped area that can be tricky to have really anything grow. So this is a great option for that. And then star jasmine, classic, um, great for warmer zones outdoors, also beloved in colder areas and containers. Um, you'll find this in your garden center. It just smells amazing. Mm -hmm. um, really low water needs. Um, a, you can train it up a trellis. In this picture, it's kind of weeping over a fence. Um, but you can also just let it go as a ground cover. So it's a nice sort of fast mm -hmm. um, ground cover that fills in. I've seen it just kind of in a bed trimmed back. It takes trimming really well. So it's it's easy to sort of make it do what you want. That's great. I think of it as a sun uh, plant where I live, but it's great to know that it would do just fine in the shade and still flower. And Yeah, it's really versatile with the sun that, yeah. that it wants. So it's a great plant for, you know, the side of the house where you're going to get sun part of the day or not, but it really, uh, it'll keep going in, in pretty heavy shade too. Well, let's talk about difficult soils. That was another challenge that I think, you know, at least a third of our uh, group raised their hand, um, you know, and that could mean clay. It could mean, as we said, sandy or, you know, leaner rocky soils even. And while, you know, you can amend to make your soil a little more balanced, you know, it, you're not going to replace all the soil in your garden. So you probably tilt one way or the other. And it's good to know about plants <clears throat> that will do well, that will really perform beautifully with your soil challenges. So, so take us through heavy and light <laughs> soil options. <here. laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, there's some plants that just aren't as picky and that's, it's so nice to have those. They're just, you know, a good option for no matter what your condition is but then there's some that are going to take a you know one condition better than another uh the fire chief uh, globe or arborvitae arborvitaes in general are a great option for clay um this is a great you know humid environment clay soil uh it can take things that are a little more wet in the winter um a lot better than some other conifers that are out there um, so that's a great option. And this one has that awesome color that it does really nice. has this chartreuse new growth. And then it gets this orange cast and that it does that pretty soon. So you have that all through the summer, not just in fall. Um, so love that one. Really small, easy care. Um, you don't really have to do anything to it. You could prune it if you wanted it to be super, super tidy, but really mm. you can just plant it and leave it. Hmm. Perfect. <laughs> uh, the Black Hawks Big Blue Stem. This is an awesome selection of a North American native, native to the sort of prairie area. Um, it stays about two feet wide, but the plumes get tall, so four to eight feet. So really interesting mm -hmm. accent. Uh, the foliage starts green and then it gets a bronze cast and then it just keeps getting darker to deep purple and almost black in the fall. And you can see in the photo just these really cool dark plumes that it gets. And it's just kind of not picky about soil. It can take clay, alkaline soils, drought. Um, it can take moderate salt levels if that's a problem. Uh, it can take some seasonal flooding. And then just thin soil in general, you don't have a lot of top soil, it can do okay with that too. Hmm. Goldsturm, Black-Eyed Susan, uh, you know, oldie but a goodie. This is not a new plant. Uh, it was the 1999 perennial plant of the year, but it's still our top selling Black-Eyed Susan because it's I mean, it, nothing has proven itself more than this perennial. It is a great one for clay. Mm. Uh, it takes heat and humidity, just sort of poor soil. Um, it's great for what I call construction soil. If mm. you live in, um, you know, new construction house and new development, the soil's been compacted. They took away some of the topsoil. Um, this does great in all of that. And just a powerhouse keeps on blooming. Mm. Um, 
really just bulletproof. So and, and pollinators love it. I'm assuming. Pollinators right. love it. Mm -hmm. um, great for bouquets. So many blooms on there. You can take some out, and you're still going to have plenty to make your garden look beautiful. Yeah. The Timeless Beauty Desert Willow. I mean, again, obviously this is a desert plant. So now we're sort of in that rocky, lean, dry. Um, this is a beautiful one. It's uh, sort of a smaller accent tree, 15 to 20 feet tall and wide, multi-stem, just really um, mm -hmm. beautiful look to it. It's a native to the Southwest US. Um, this one doesn't set any seed, so you're not gonna get any little seedlings. Uh, it has a really long bloom period, spring all the way through summer, and it attracts hummingbirds, and it's pollinated by bumblebees, so you're going to get all those great pollinators with it. Beautiful. Uh, Lantana is a great one for heat. Again, southeast or southwest, um, just continuous flowering. And it's adaptable just a really wide range of soils as long as it drains, mm -hmm. um, but it can do sandy or rocky and fertile type soils. Um, it's great as a coastal planting. The Fiesta series is sterile. So it just, again, the energy is going into flowering um, and it's just gonna keep going. Uh, it has a slightly trailing habit, um, but this is a great one too, if it's not hardy in your area, it's, this is a great one for containers, just awesome color, really yeah. easy. Very festive. <laughs> <It really Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> a fiesta indeed. Uh -huh. uh, and then Rose of Sharon, these are just not picky. So it's really nice. Yeah. They, you know, they need some okay drainage, but as long as you have clay that drains mm -hmm. or they take sandy soil and they don't care about the pH at all, if that's mm -hmm. a challenge mm -hmm. for you. Uh, the Chateau series is great. A lot of the older vi uh, varieties of Rose of Sharon, they only bloom at the very tips of the stems, um, but these you get the flowers all the way up and down. Um, so it has those gorgeous hibiscus type blooms um, and a lot of them. So awesome, awesome, easy plant. Yeah, and I think here in Northern California, people are, they just, I don't think they're as familiar with the Rose of Sharon. Um, and it's just such a wonderful bloomer. Um, when you know when you want that sort of romantic windblown kind of look in, in your garden it's a, mm -hmm. it's a great choice um okay so other um conditions besides you know hot dry you could get these extremes right very wet and your garden is just soaked <laughs> um <clears throat> for days on end to very dry and so what are some great plants that can stand up to extremes, I guess, um, is the question here. Um, and did you have trouble coming up with these or are, do we actually grow many that, that would apply to these conditions? This was a little harder, uh -huh. I would say. This is yeah. a, a tough one. I found plenty of options, um, but there's a lot that can be met, uh, meant by very wet or very mm -hmm dry yeah. like how wet are we talking how dry are we talking <laughs> okay. uh, so it does depend a bit on your climate this is my yard I have the very wet to very dry I've got a uh -huh. seasonal wetland right yeah. next to me and then wow. um, okay <laughs> dry Oregon summers okay. um so this is something I've been figuring out in my garden too and anytime I have a problem with a plant it didn't seem to work I just take it out and replace it with one of, one of these <laughs> <laughs> I've already brought in the yellow twig dogwood. Just like that didn't work. All right, bring in the dogwoods. <laughs> um, the nine barks are one that can do that swing from winter to summer. Um, can take fairly wet soils in winter. You've got the dry summers. It's cool with that too. It's a North American native selection. Uh, and this one's great. The dark star, the color doesn't fade at all. Some of the darker varieties get a little more green by the end of summer, but this one just stays really dark. So yeah, it's really it's, intense. It's lovely. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, mine's like almost black most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Uh, yellow twig dogwood, um, native plant, just classic, easy, obviously known for those vibrant yellow stems in winter that's really going to 
brighten up your garden. It's super hardy down to zone two. So if you're in one of those areas that's just snow and, you know, really, really cold, not much growing in the winter, this is a great way to get your color. But I also love it for these little ornamental yellow or white berries that I think are just so cute and the birds love them too. So it's a great wildlife plant. Yeah. The Heritage, Heritage River birch, um, you know, people know that birches are great for really wet areas, um, but the river birches are actually the most tolerant of dry conditions as well. So this is great for those swings, places that it, it dries out more, isn't constantly wet. Again, a North American native, and this one is also the most resistant to bronze birch borer, if that's something in your area. But and it's also just of the birch is just my absolute favorite bark. Yes, so those. interesting. Just it's the so alone. cool. Yeah, very cool. Real estate. Um, so just awesome. Love it. It's multi-stemmed. And I've seen them in, you know, like commercial landscapes doing really great. So tough yeah. conditions, um, looking awesome. Uh, day lilies. I love day lilies. They're so easy. They take anything. They're <laughs> such a great problem solver. Um, they do their wet soil. It can be pretty like wet most of the year, or it can do the wet to dry. Um, it's just not picky about soil. It can take clays. It can take things that drain more than that. Um, just really, really versatile. And almost no maintenance like you know at the end of the year once the foliage is kind of all pretty much gone away on its own I just go like run my hand around it grab it all uh the stormy sky daily the sky series are rebloomers um and they're just gorgeous and this is just my favorite this is my favorite <laughs> of the colors. Yeah, the, the colors are beautiful in the series but I agree with you this is this is a, a favorite um I love that sort of, it kind of goes with our dressed up bohemian trend mm -hmm. that we talked about um, last year. It, it uh, And I love that the intensity of the the purple center. I mean, the mm -hmm. almost center, it's just gorgeous, but also the rim around it. It's just, it's yeah. one of those uh, blooms that you keep staring at and noticing new things. Yeah, I love it just because there's three distinct colors in there. So there you go, instant yeah. color palette. For your right. Just work <laughs> off that one. Uh, Roseanne Cranesbill, again, you know, oldie but a goodie. This was 2008 perennial plant of the year, but just such a great performer. Does the drier soil, does the wet, uh, keeps blooming. And it's just a great filler. Um, it can take more, it's flexible with the light it can take. So it can mm. take, you know, full sun, it can take partial sun. It's, so it's a great one to tuck underneath shrubs to kind of fill in the area um, or it fills in a perennial bed really nicely uh -huh. and forester's feathery grass um you know just an awesome just not picky it can take pretty compacted bad soils it can take clay it's fine with more drainage it's fine with drier conditions uh, it stays narrow so it only stay, it gets about two feet wide but then it sends up these huge tall plumes in late summer um, that blow in the wind and just look great but it's great if you have a really narrow space that you don't mm -hmm. have a lot of room yeah and it's non-invasive it doesn't set any seed it's really uh lovely um form um provides a lot of texture i love that okay uh those deer <laughs> <laughs> You know, as soon as you, like I said, as soon as you find a plant that you think, oh, they, they won't eat this, boom, you know, sometimes they do, uh, because hungry deer will probably try, you know, something at least once. Um, and I've heard all kinds of things like, you know, sprinkle cayenne pepper on your leaves or put Irish spring soap, you know, in your garden or on your plants. Um, but you've actually found some interesting choices that I never knew um, deer didn't like or don't prefer. <laughs> so walk us through your your favorites here. Yeah, so so deer problems are kind of interesting um, because beyond, you know, if they're hungry enough, they'll try it, things like that. Um, they're also kind of have regional tastes, which I think is really interesting, but some in some areas um, they might like one thing and in other areas they leave it alone. Um, so you really, it's it's great to check in with your local garden center because they're probably going to know what specifically um, they're eating in your area or not eating in your area. 
And something cool with Monrovia, if you see a little round deer resistant tag on top of your tag, the garden center chose to put that on that particular plan. So that's uh, like instant expert yeah. advice. That's <laughs> not something we just do for that plant all over the country. Mm -hmm. So if you see those, check it out, check out your local garden centers. We love our garden center partners. So give them some love. <laughs> Uh, so lamb's ear, um, they don't like that texture, that, you know, soft. Fuzzy. Like, yes, yeah. well, the texture we love to uh -huh. you know, touch and pet. It's so lovely. They don't like that in their mouth. So <laughs> um, they tend to leave that one alone. The big ears, lamb's ear um, doesn't rarely flowers. So some people don't like the flowers on lamb's ear because they're like, yeah. Um, and we'll just cut them down. So if you're one of those people, this is a good option for you. Um, if you're looking for the flowers, silver carpet's a great option. The sparkler, arrowwood viburnum. Um, this is a North American native again. This is a great wildlife plant, a uh, bigger shrub. So fills in some space, 10 to 15 feet tall and wide. It gets these great showy blue black berries that are a little um, iridescent almost um, that look great and then also birds love them too and then it has awesome fall color sort of that mixes of burgundies yeah. and yellows and oranges um, and I forgot to mention on all of these they're also rabbit resistant so if oh. you're dealing with rabbits too uh -huh. um, good to know or that as well. Um, yeah, I had to include peonies because I actually, I didn't know that uh -huh. deer left peonies alone, but apparently they're pretty consistently not fans of peonies. So uh -huh. I think sometimes it's so frustrating when you have a lot of deer, you can't grow some of these plants that you really want to with these beautiful blooms. So peonies are a great option all the varieties herbaceous ito and tree peonies they leave them all alone yeah. uh herbaceous ones need a little winter chill so if you're not in a colder area um you want to go with an ito which don't need that chill so those yeah. are great for your warmer zones if you have really mild winters uh this is the julia rose i mean all of these flowers are on one plant at the same time um, so just this amazing evolution of color on those great cut flowers, just gorgeous. And these are, these are big flowers. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I know that we, we tend to grow our peonies longer at our nursery locations before we um, send them to the garden center. So when you get a Monrovia peony, you're going to have blooms that first, that first year. Yeah, absolutely. You you know, if they get big enough before they sell in the garden center, you'll see them covered in bloom. So that's a question we get a lot is, are they going to bloom the first year? And mm -hmm. they absolutely are. Yeah. Uh, rosemary. I love rosemary. I love to cook. Um, I love cooking with rosemary and I hate dried rosemary. So I mm -hmm. always have a rosemary in my garden. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously that a uh, wonderful scent and aroma, the oils in there that we use for cooking, um, they don't like. Mm -hmm. And then it's just such an easy plant, you know, really low water needs. It's not picky about soil. It can take those poor soils, um, a, a lot of drainage. It can do more clay too. So just really easy, awesome. And it loves the heat. Um, and you get those cute little blooms the the Tuscan blue has sort of almost these kind of clear blue blooms that are really lovely uh Paris uh this is nice because it's sort of a woodland plant so if you're you know woodland area a lot of times you get more deer there uh -huh. um beautiful beautiful one I love the Enchanted Forest series this one in particular um you know, traditionally Paris have these sort of weeping blooms, but these set up the blooms in, you know, completely upright, which is really cool. And they start budding in the winter um, and then bloom really early, just loaded with blooms. But I like the little buds too. So I sort of just, I'm sitting and waiting, like, when are you going to bloom? Because it's so early. <laughs> it's the, one of the first. So I just love that one. And uh, catmint, we could have put this in so many categories in this talk. Um, you know, 
deer don't like that aromatic foliage, but it is such a great performer in the garden. Junior walker is a little smaller, um, 14 to 16 inches uh, tall. So it's great in containers, um, all sorts of places you can put it. And this one's a sterile variety. Mm -hmm. And it's another one you can tuck in really easily along pathways. The mm -hmm. bees love it. You know, I, I have a lot of this actually in my in my garden because it's it's a really pretty kind of um, filler plant and it just mm -hmm. yeah, looks beautiful. Yeah, it just keeps blooming. So you're mm -hmm. seeing you're seeing the, the bees buzzing around it just all yeah. summer. Gorgeous. Okay. Now we're going to talk about our superstar plants, the uh, put them in any situation, they just can't can't fail. Um, and I'm really fond of uh, sedums. We see a sedum over here on the left. Um, we grow many different kinds of sedum, but I, I love them because um, they, they go well with lots of other plants, uh, but they also look beautiful in containers in the ground. Um, I also love yuccas, the, the plant on the right here. Um, a, a yucca that we grow called Bright Star is one of my favorites. Uh, so eye-catching. I love seeing it either in rows or maybe, you know, um, you know, more organically uh, arranged as in this garden on the on the right, but just so striking um, for where I live. Um, but you've got some other choices here that I'm less familiar with. Like I really don't know anything about the chase tree. Um, so let's let's start with that one. Yeah, so when I got this one is when I have to write up for the tags on the website, I started doing the research and seeing what the breeder was saying. And I was just blown away at all the problems that they solved with this plant. Uh, really amazing. So a chase tree is normally sort of like a larger tree, but this is a dwarf variety. So it's a lot easier to deal with um, five to six feet tall, four to five feet wide. So more like a, a large shrub. It's heat tolerant, even in the deep south with very high humidity. It's sterile. Um, the other varieties will freely reseed, but this one doesn't. You're not going to get any of those little seedlings. Uh, it's drought tolerant. It's more hardy than normal. So they were able to drop this an entire zone from six down to five, which opens up a, a huge chunk of the country. It's deer resistant and uh, it's loved by butterflies and hummingbirds and has wow. these gorgeous blooms. And um, I love that foliage color. Mm -hmm. I love the dark, dark stems too. It's just a really mm -hmm. great plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just awesome plant. Um, as you mentioned, sedums, really, I think sedums are more versatile than people realize. You know, obviously, it's a sedum. It wants, you know, it can do the lean soils and the full sun and the heat, but it's also tolerant of more clay soils, those clay soils that um, get really dry and, and crack. Um, this variety doesn't um, flop the Evolution Chocolate Fountain, um, so it's a nice compact variety uh, that won't flop open, just really strong stems. Um, they can take a little more shade than people even realize. Like you can do partial shade with these. Mm -hmm. It's a great street strip plant, just really mm -hmm. easy. Um, and then just such a great variety of colors. I love the dark foliage on this one. It gets the really dark blooms. Um, I have it in a container. So it that's great in containers. And I have it paired with silver foliage. Mm. It just looks that light and dark looks really awesome. Really striking, yeah. Uh, so Potentilla, I feel like maybe gets a bad rap, but there's such great varieties out there. And really you put this in sort of a, a garden, a lush garden with lots of plants and it's, it's going to look awesome. Mm -hmm. They're very hardy down to zone three. They're drought tolerant. They love heat, uh, really easy care. This is a pretty compact variety, only about two to three feet tall and wide, um, deer resistant and you know this variety has, just has this great color the yeah yellow, so pretty I really love it pretty. really charming really charming yeah. I know some people are diehard yellows with their potentils but <laughs> this is a fun one if you're looking for something a little a little different mm -hmm. 
lavenders just such awesome problem solvers you know they're fine with bad soils and lean soils rocky um they love heat they're you know fine with drought obviously very deer resistant um and on the javelin forte um series is better with the cold wet winter conditions than most lavender so it's a great option if you're in the northwest or that's something you deal with if you are looking for something hardier than the Sp spanish lavenders um which have you know the spanish lavenders have these great really showy blooms but if you're in a colder zone you can check out the phenomenal french uh lavenders so that one's already down to zone four so there's options mm -hmm. Um, as you mentioned, yuccas are awesome, just so easy, heat and drought, uh, they do poor soils, but they're also hardy down to zone four. So, you know, you think of them as a desert plant, but you can plant these in much colder areas. They're deer tolerant and I mean, really no maintenance, you just plant them. So <laughs> you just plant them, they look awesome. This is the color guard, which is great. Um, green edges and sort of a creamy yellow in the center. And Russian sage, um, fun fact, not Russian or a sage, uh, <laughs> but we love it anyway. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, heat and drought. It loves heat. It's heat and drought tolerant. We have this out in this little island in the parking lot at the Oregon nursery. And just all summer, you know, it's hot. It's surrounded by gravel and it's fine it's thriving it's it's huge so <laughs> um the traditional variety gets really big really fast so four to five feet tall and wide which is great if you need to fill in space you want something at the back of your border blue jean baby is shorter a little smaller so two to three feet tall three feet wide um so nice if you've got smaller spaces um deer tolerant it's just this great for late season um constantly goes really all the way up till fall and i think it has some nice winter interest too because the uh -huh. stems after it drops everything are this lovely like silver three color um, yeah and they're really yeah so i i like to leave them for a while i think it uh -huh. looks really cool yeah i think it's interesting too looking at the screen how the, the color blue or purple, you know, kind of comes up too as being such a versatile uh, color that fits, you know, along, it complements many other colors in the garden. So these are superstars, not just because they um, can deal with so many different conditions, but also because they, they play well with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we were um, talking about, uh, we've been talking about containers throughout uh, the past hour, but I really want to focus on some great plant choices um, that uh, can, can set you up for, you know, easy maintenance, uh, successful uh, container gardening this summer. Something I like to do is um, choose, you know, one really striking plant, one pot, um, create a statement. Um, maybe there's a part of the garden that you just need to fill in temporarily, or um, you, you just want to not really have to think about um, design too much. You know, it's choosing a, a grass, choosing a carex or, you know, um, a chorus and just kind of letting it be in a pot, I think is a lovely idea. The other um, thing I like to do a lot with the heat uh, here is to have kind of a cool palette going. So um, so I think thinking about plants that can kind of help cool things down visually is really nice. And, you know, looking at the, the lamb's ears or, you know, some of the um, the the uh, junior um, walker you know cat mint you know kind of provide that cooling effect um, but maybe you don't want that when you want um, something that you know is really vibrant and kind of does a little happy dance in your container um, I turn to sun believable our sunflower a lot because it does really pump out the blooms um, it just makes me um, happy you know looking at it looking at those you know, big blooms on on long stems and thinking about you know, what it pairs well with. It's also, you know, really a uh, versatile um, plant too. I mean, you could underplant it with things like the potato vine or choose some, you know, sweet little, you know, petunias or calabricoas or the blanket flower um, like we have here. Um, so those are some of the 
the principles, I guess, I think about um, when I'm creating containers for the summer. Um, so you want to walk us through um, some choices, too, here? Uh, because you've got the it's unbelievable, but you've also got some other ones that I haven't thought of. Yeah, like you said, some believable, awesome, keeps blooming, spring to frost. That means you can also, you know, keep it around, maybe start putting it with your pumpkins. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of keep working with it. It's great for that. It's really heat tolerant. It doesn't like a lot of water. It blooms better with less water uh, and it's non-invasive. So yeah, really great option. Um, great for cut flower arrangements too. Mm -hmm. Uh, we love, I feel like every time we do a design uh, for a container, we stick a hoogra in there. Um, I love, <laughs> I love hoogra. Uh, I, I asked someone once, like, how many colors of hoogra are too much in one garden? And we decided there's, there's no limit. You can do it. What's the barrier? But uh, I know people think of them as sort of like a full shade plant or partial shade plant, but the darker the foliage on that, the more sun they can take. So one that's this dark uh, mm -hmm. really can take quite a bit of sun. Um, this is the dark and bright siren song. It's got these great contrasting flowers or the pink and white. Um, it's nice because they sit a little lower down closer to the plant. So mm -hmm. it just looks a little more tidy in your containers. Um, and hummingbirds actually really love the flowers. I see them buzzing around. Huh. Um, and you can always, if it, there's usually a side of your container that gets less sun if it's on the porch. You know, mm -hmm. if you're worried about the heat, you're in a really hot area, stick it to the side facing the house or, you know, put it on the east side of a container with taller plants and that's going to be plenty of shade for it. The Itsy Bitsy Peach Miniature Rose, I mean, the photo kind of, speaks for itself on the beauty of it. Just absolutely gorgeous, amazing color. Uh, it just keeps going with the blooms, just covered. This is an awesome one plant in one, you know, one plant mm -hmm. in the pot plant because it's just filled and it's a really nice, compact, just lots of foliage. Um, so it's going to just look gorgeous on its is it own. Like, is it like two feet tall or, or one and a half? Feet? Um, like 18 inches tall. Okay. Yeah. yeah two They're really wide. sweet. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Just a lovely, yeah. lovely little one. It also has um, better disease resistance. So good resistance to mildew and rust. Uh, angel wing senecio, it doesn't really look like it, but this is actually a succulent. It's related to, if you're familiar with blue chalk sticks. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it loves heat, it loves the sun, and it's just so great in containers. I mean, white goes with everything. So <laughs> uh, awesome for that, can take your heat and drought. Mm -hmm. um, love it. Uh, Enduriscape, um, dark purple verbena. These verbenas are great. They just keep blooming. So they're an awesome container plant. Um, they take heat better, they flower longer. Um, they sort of, they creep a little bit. So they'll kind of go over the edge of your pot a little bit and just look really nice, but just sort of continuous, vibrant color. Mm -hmm. And I love cordylines in container. It's such a great thing in the center. And because of that base shape of it, it's really easy to plant other things around it. So mm -hmm. it's it's your great thing in the middle that you can put your really showy flowering annuals around it. The little red star is a little smaller than mm -hmm. other varieties. So it's really good for containers, only gets about 20 inches wide. Uh -huh. And this one you can overwinter indoors if that's something you need to do. So you can have it in your pots outside and then bring it inside. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's a really, it's a sculptural plant. Like you said, it's got that beautiful vase shape. And so that if you want an elegant uh, container and that gives you a little bit of, you know, height. I love the the pairing of the the dark kukra and the senecio together. That That could look really, really nice in one container. And interesting about the darker um the darker colored hookra sort of standing up to sun a little bit more um mm -hmm. than people might expect i think that's a great great takeaway to remember so um that uh completes our uh parade of problem solving plants uh today and some great container ideas but i notice we have a little bit more time 
um, to answer a few questions live. So Kathleen, I'll throw it back to you. Great. Yes, we had so many great questions today. Um, I know when we were talking yesterday about the webinar, we were wondering, are we going to get a lot of questions or are we going to get just a few? So you all have kept all of the experts just busy with the flurry of questions. So hopefully we'll We'll get those all answered for you. Many, many questions on deer resistant and rabbit resistant um, plants. So thank you guys both for, for really um, kind of chiming in there. Um, we have lots of love for dark star nine bark today, which actually is one of my favorites as well. But we had a question or two about um, shorter varieties that would give you that same look as dark star. Do you have any recommendations there? Yeah, absolutely. We have this um, variety, uh, Little Joker. Um, mm -hmm. It has the dark foliage as well, but it is just this lovely little petite thing. And it, it is so cute. If you see this thing in a pot in your garden center, you're going to grab it. It is. It looks so nice. The way it flowers is just all over it, um, with just these adorable little flowers. It's, it's a great one. So yeah, that one's a lot smaller. So mm -hmm. that's a great option. Excellent. Megan, I, I'm laughing about this question because I asked you to the very first time I saw it. Lots of questions about what plant is behind you in your picture. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, this is a, um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting, avalanche, avalanche clematis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Another question that came up in a couple of different ways too is we, we had a number of people ask if um, native plants are big problem solvers. What do you guys think about that? I think native plants are great to mix in your garden um, uh, and they, you know, they're native, so they tend to be adapted to where you live, um, so they can be, you know, low maintenance, they fit your soil, which is wonderful. I think sometimes natives can, because they are so acclimated to where you live, can get really happy and a little bit out of control. Um, and we find that a lot of our gardeners write in to tell us that <clears throat> they like to mix natives in the garden, but not go wholly native. Um, because if you want something that's easy to maintain and offers, you know, long blooming season, you know, some other features that a lot of people want, you, you want a mix of, um, of plants, um, not so, not, you know, cultivars and natives are, are good. Um, I think also people think that, you know, if you want to attract pollinators and be part of the, um, uh, you know, providing safe haven for wildlife, that that means you have to only plant natives. And that that's not that's not true. I think what we've found, you know, through research, um, what we're learning is that <clears throat> cultivars can be also good for, for pollinators and that the number one um, uh, best principle to keep in mind is just diversity. Planting a lot of diversity in your garden is really great for wildlife. Megan, what would you add to that? Yeah, I just had this funny anecdote. We were talking about yarrow in another, um, which this yarrow almost got put in so many slides. It's a great problem solver, but someone asked, they're like, isn't that a weed? Uh -huh. and <laughs> Because the native variety, a lot of people consider it a weed. It's, you know, it's a meadow plant. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, spreads. Um, there's so many great selections and cultivars that are going to have all the benefits. You know, like I said, it's a huge problem solver. It's really adaptable, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to stay contained and not spread. So it's a great way to bring in a yarrow um, without fighting it out of your lawn and things like that. Mm -hmm. I love diversity in the garden because I think that's the best way to garden. You get so much of many mm -hmm. different things. That's my garden style right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Katie, not to be um, undone, people want to know what the, what the plant is behind you as well. So this is a fern from our Jurassic uh, series, like the beard tongue that, that Megan mentioned. It's a Dan Hinckley selection, and this is Lady Pterodactyl, and I just love the, the fine um, the fine texture of it and uh, the changing um, colors too. It gets that nice sort of peachy edges to it. Yeah, it's really dimensional fern. I love it. We have so many great choices for, for Zoom backgrounds. It's, it's, it's a <laughs> yeah. wonderful problem. <laughs> Um, we had a number of questions on specific plants or specific, I need a shade plant for zone so-and-so. 
Katie, tell us how monrovia.com can be really helpful for yes. searching for problem solvers. Sure. So um, a feature that we have on monrovia.com is our plant finder. If you're at the website on the top bar, you'll see it says my plant finder. Click on that and you'll be able to filter, um, you know, all of our plants by what you need. So you can look by landscaping need, um, you can put in your zone, <clears throat> definitely only see plants that will grow where you live, but you can filter by mature size. If you want something flowering at a certain time of year, if you're dealing with clay soil, all of those um, filters um, can be applied and that can help you, um, you know, make the plant choice, you know, quickly um, on our site by using that tool. And our last question, somebody wants to know what's behind me. This is Blackhawk's big blue stem, which actually was on the problem solving list um, that Megan created. And they both talked about great solutions there. So I think, you know, that's really, will continue to answer some of the questions that are coming in. Um, online. So um, I think that's really all we have time for today. Okay. Just a reminder that we will be sending you out a link that will have today's presentation. It will also have a plant list and all of those plants will be linked. So you can go to monrovia.com and learn more. And you can also sign up for Monrovia's Grow Beautifully newsletter to receive an invite to our next discussion. So Katie, tell us what to expect in the next few months here. Right, so we'll take a little bit of a summer break and then come back uh, end of August, beginning of September to talk about fall planting ideas. So please uh, look for uh, more about that. If you're subscribing to our newsletter, you'll definitely read about it. And then the other um, uh, great thing that's coming out soon is our backyard habitat guide. Um, we are refreshing <clears throat> some of our uh, backyard habitat plans to attract bees and butterflies um, and hummingbirds. Uh, so look for that. Uh, that'll be coming out very soon. Um, so we're not, <clears throat> we may be not doing a webinar, you know, in July, but um, but we've got lots of good inspiration and ideas for your summer garden. So uh, stay connected with us. Sounds wonderful. Thank you both so much. Thank you everyone who joined us. We appreciate it so much. All right. Thanks, day. everyone. <clears throat> then thank you, Megan. <laughs> Good yeah, to see you here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> A lot of fun. Bye, everyone. Happy gardening. <laughs>